Morocco has gone ahead to shock Portugal by beating them by one goal to nil. And it's the first quarterfinal game in the World Cup of 2022 that has seen it not go to extra time. Remember yesterday, we had two quarterfinal games that all went to extra time and went to penalties. The first one was against Brazil playing Croatia. It ended 1-1 into penalties and obviously Brazil was knocked out. Then the second one was Argentina. However, much Messi put them two ahead of Netherlands. In just seven minutes, Netherlands erupted and they scored two goals to level it to go to extra time and hence go in the World Cups that saw Argentina go through by Amy Martinez saving two penalties and Virgil van Dijk and Bagaus were really denied to score goals by Amy Martinez. Now today, Morocco has gone ahead to go and really score a goal in the second half, if I'm not mistaken, because they scored in the 42nd minute, three minutes to the end of the first half, and they managed to hold up there until the 90th minute when they are leading and they've kept a clean sheet. Congratulations to Morocco, first African team to go on and qualify into the semi-finals of the World Cup. This is Rokani Media Football. How are you guys and where are you watching us from? I'm a proud African. A team that I never tipped to go on and make wonders has gone ahead to make wonders. And secondly, my favorites, only one, has le one is left, that is Argentina. I talked of Brazil. Brazil has been knocked out. I talked about uh, Portugal. Portugal has been knocked out. And obviously, we are left with only Argentina that made it to the semi-final that is going to play Croatia. And maybe if at all they beat Croatia, they are going to go into the World Cup, into the World Cup final that's going to be played next Sunday. Smash the like button, comment and share. Go on and tell me what you think about this result. Morocco, first African team to progress through to the semi-finals of the World Cup. How do you feel it? And obviously, it's time for Africa to celebrate this, this huge and big win for Portugal. We never went into the semi-finals because of penalties. That would have been an excuse that everyone would have gone ahead and given, but no way to give an excuse that we've gone in there because of penalties. It has been a game that has been played for 90 minutes and the likes of Ronaldo, Bruno Fernandes, Jao Felix, Goncalo Ramos, who scored a hat-trick against Switzerland, couldn't put their foot into the back of the net. The likes of Bernardo Silva, they've been silenced by the African team and obviously that is Morocco. Secondly, one will say that maybe it's a shock for Morocco, but Sorry, a shock, a shock that Morocco has knocked out Portugal. If at all you've been following this World Cup very well, Morocco is the only team that has not considered a goal from its opponents. If they've only considered one goal, and that one goal was an own goal when they're playing against Canada, that game ended, was it 3-1? 3 or 2-1, one, one of those. They are really having the best defense in the World Cup. That's it. And trust me, most of their players have gone ahead to showcase their goodies onto the world stage and I believe they're going to get huge, huge teams. And I believe there is one that is already on the market of Liverpool. When you look at Hakimi playing as a right back for them, then Ayala playing as a left back for them, then Rais and Yamik playing in that central defense. They are really great players, and I believe they are going to go on and really cause shock to very many players. And obviously, that is a team which goes by the names of Morocco for you. But to bring you up to speed, it's the fourth African team to reach the semi-finals of the World Cup. And obviously, Cameroon in 1996, they reached the semi, they reached the quarterfinal. They failed. In 2002, Senegal was playing Turkey. They played the entire 90 minutes. They went. The entire, the entire 90 minutes ended 0-0. They went to extra time. And by then, there was the golden goal. Whoever scored first in the extra time, the game could end there. And you were declared the winner. That's how things were. But right now, things changed. 2002, Senegal came close. And the closest Africa has ever, has ever come was in 2010. When Ghana got a penalty in the last half of the extra time, just like 2-3 minutes left, obviously... Asamoah Gian hit that ball on the, go on, the, on, the, on the crossbar and it didn't go in. You remember that Suarez red card that was given to him after denying a ball to cross the line or the goal line of a team which goes by the names of 
Uruguay. So that's how closest Africa has ever become. In 2014, we tried, but not. In 2018, we tried. Ghana was the best team there. Sorry, Senegal was the best team. In 2014, it was Nigeria, but we couldn't come close. This time around, Morocco, a team that no one expected, we least expected them to do this. They are into the semi-finals of the World Cup. Congratulations to Morocco doing Africa proud. And here, we can all go out and demand for more positions in the World Cup of 2024 and 2030 because we are having 54 footballing nations that deserve to be having more representatives than all of the federations in the World Cup because Africa has the most federations. 54 federations, and when you look at Europe, they're having like, is it 30? Um... South America, they're having like 10, 15. So we are having very many and we are least represented. Now, a team breaking into the semifinals of the World Cup, that is Morocco, gives Africa a chance to have another slot added to it. And maybe we are going to see more three or four teams added to Africa in the next World Cup. But obviously, Ronaldo in tears. We expected a Messi versus Ronaldo finale, maybe, if at all they went through went through from it went through past a team which goes by names of morocco that was impossible messi going through he's in the semi-final if at all portugal went in through maybe they would have faced england or france and the result a positive result might have really led them to the finale to see to either they really fight to have a Messi ronaldo final that's totally out messi is through and that is bad news for ronaldo that's why you've seen ronaldo crying because in this battle of who is the god of all time of who of who is the greatest of all time there is lots of things that you need to know. Lots of things that you need to know. One, if Messi goes ahead to reach the final of the World Cup, he would have played two finales in his entire career. And I'm meaning World Cup finales in his entire career. And obviously, Ronaldo has not even played a World Cup semi-final. I don't remember Portugal playing a semi-final for the World Cup. I don't remember. Do you remember? In 2006, they didn't. 2010, they didn't. 2014, they didn't. 2018, they didn't. And obviously, 2022, they've not. So, if at all Messi goes ahead and wins this World Cup, it's going to mean to Ronaldo that Messi has grabbed one more trophy that Ronaldo can no longer grab. Because Ronaldo is aging. He's hitting 38 years next February. Meaning, Messi would even have another some two years or four years to come and play the World Cup. But I believe if at all Messi wins the World Cup, he's going to retire from the national team. That's it. He'll retire, obviously, because he would have achieved everything that he needs to achieve in the game of football. And obviously, today, Morocco has gone ahead to give them a beating of their lives. Morocco is really a very decent side, especially when they decide to do everything. It's not a team that plays a low block because they want, but because of the quality of play teams they are really facing. If Morocco decides to open up, you get, they'll be annihilated. But when they decide to pass that ball going forward, they can build from behind. You get, there is shirt number eight of Morocco that I really loved a lot. He goes by names of Unahi. Unahi, to me, is the best player they're having, especially the way he links the midfield to the attack. He gets that ball from the back four, from the midfield, and then brings it the likes of Bofal, there is Neyesri and Hakimi Ziyech. He brings that ball to them very, very well, and that's why you've seen them go ahead and really score a header that came out of the build-up of Morocco. And Portugal has nothing to, go out, to come out and give us as an excuse. They have nothing to give us as an excuse because everything was there. The game was there for them to be won. If I look at the stats, you're going to also go and confirm that the game was there to be won, but they couldn't come out to win this game of football. Let me show you a little bit of the stats. Then you're going to know that this game was there to be won. When you look at when you look at Portugal, they had, sorry, Morocco had nine shots, Portugal had 12, and they just had three shots on target each. That means Portugal needed some little composure to go at least convert like six. I told you to be on the safe side, you should you should have half of the total targets created on targets, meaning that three more were needed to go on and do the needful to see either that Portugal finds something in there for you. 26% ball possession by Morocco, 74% ball possession by, by Portugal. I told you Morocco surrendered the ball possession, and obviously they played well. 
Portugal had 74, but they couldn't use that position to break down the team of Morocco. And by the way, when I entered into the team, I thought that maybe Portugal had all the tools to unlock, had all the keys to unlock that defense of Morocco. Because when you're talking about a player that can see out a pass, they're having Bruno. He can hit you from the far. He can find a pass and obviously cause trouble to your team. Bernardo Silva, he can find an opening. Joao Felix, he can act well in tight spaces. And you know that's going to be a game of compactness in the final third of a team which goes by names of Morocco because Portugal had numbers and obviously Morocco were playing behind the ball. So I thought Portugal had lots of keys to unlock the defense of a team which goes by the names of Morocco. But obviously things never went the way we expected. And this is what makes the game of football a different game altogether. It's unpredictable. 248 passes completed by Morocco. 663 passes completed by Portugal. 71% passes, passing accuracy. 85% passing accuracy for Portugal. One yellow card to both sides. One red card to Morocco. Zero red cards to Portugal. Two offsides. Two Morocco and two to Portugal. Three corners to Morocco and nine for Portugal. It happened at the El Thamama Stadium. That's where the game of football happened. That saw the likes of Ronaldo left in tears. The likes of Bruno Fernandes left in tears because it is day for Africa to shine. And Morocco has made Africa proud. Everything is possible. Their side is really decent. Their side is really decent. And this is where I come to believe that if at all the manager of the national team went ahead and really invited all called Hakimi Ziyech in the African Cup of Nations, they would have done lots of things because Hakimi Ziyech complements the others very, very well. It's like he's given a free roll. He roves. On the left, on the right, centrally, and obviously he's everywhere on the field of play. But good enough. Thank God that manager was sucked that we really dropped Hakimi Ziyech after that, after that bad, bad participation in the African Cup of Nations and after qualifying for the World Cup. Obviously, they brought in this African manager and he's doing great. And secondly, I'd like to send kudos to all African teams for deciding not to use foreign-based coaches to go to the World Cup. For the very first time, Africa has gone to the World Cup with two, sorry, with all coaches for their teams being African. None of them is coming in from a different continent altogether. That is a kudos. And to say to it that an African coach has led his team to the semifinals of the World Cup. It's really great and it's something how to come in here and really hail because it's known something usual because we've waited for it for very many years. In 1996, as I told you, we thought Cameroon would make it. They didn't. 2002, Senegal versus Turkey. It failed. Ghana, just a minute to the end of that extra time, a penalty that was hit by Asamoah Gyan and it struck the crossbar. Then this time round, it is Morocco into the World Cup of 2022 they are into the semi-finals what are your reactions to morocco one portugal zero into the comment section below congratulations to morocco thank you for raising the african flag high you are really you are really you are really heroes and you deserve everything that heroes are given in your respective countries respect to morocco portugal walk back home ronaldo is now going to talk about his future because he is now a free agent, and obviously, the manager had dropped him. He came on as a substitute. Bruno Fernandes, Jao Felix, Diego Dalo, and very many others. It looks like it's the end of their journey of the World Cup, but so sudden for Ronaldo and Pepe. I believe this is their last World Cup. But Portugal has some good future. Rafael Liao, Jao Felix, Bruno Fernandes, um, Ruben Diaz, Diego Dalo, Cancelo, Mendes, they are having quite a decent team. Vitinha, there is very, very good, good Portugal side. And I believe they, they've missed Diego Jota. If at all you know him for Liverpool because of an injury, I believe him playing or leading the line for a team which goes by the names of Portugal. He has a lot of quality he adds to them and obviously puts them at a different level. So I believe it's really sad, but obviously my man of the match is that shirt number eight of Morocco. Let me not lie to you. That guy, I'm even trying to master his name. He's known as Onahi. Onahi is my man of the match. He, this guy 
is a revelation I believe he's going to get a very top move because he plays very well in that midfield three. The way he links them to the attack is really immense. I like the way he got hold of that ball, meaning that it's his, he's not afraid of anything. He kept going and running for a side which goes by names of Morocco and they put Portugal down their feet. Thank you for watching again. Rock and David is my name. May the Lord bless you abundantly. I'm out as Portugal is out and Morocco progressed to the semi-finals of the World Cup. First African team to do that.